Dr. Mohebi here uh, so graciously invited me. I know I've been bugging him incessantly about the vertebrapin, <laughs> you know. Um, so he shot me down a couple times, but I'm persistent. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Mohebi, for having me. Uh, you know, you're doing some testing in regards to FUE scarring and you know, scarring just in general with hair transplants. Tell me a little bit about uh, what you plan on doing. Well, scarring is one of my favorite research topics. Before becoming a hair transplant surgeon, I was at Johns Hopkins working on wound healing. That's how I got into mm -hmm. hair. So we were making wounds in the back of mice, and then we we're injecting the DNA of growth factors and trying to see what growth factors, DNA or plasmid can help the wound heal better. And then because of that, we figured some of them are growing hair. And then I started talking to hair restoration figures and then started doing my research, uh, my fellowship with Dr. Brassman, and that's how it started. So re scarring is my initial interest, even before hair transplant. Wow. So you guys heard that first. We have a scar specialist here. I have been probably annoying a lot of doctors out there <laughs> with my vertiporfin, but I think it's such a novel treatment that it it may work. And I sent you some research uh, with uh, Dr. Longacre in, in Stanford and a PhD student who um, studied vertiporfin on pigs, which, you know, mimics uh, more closely to humans. And the scarring is pretty impressive. Um, I, I think that at worst, you know, you'll get an improvement. Um, so I'm excited for you to actually try it. And I just want to put it out there. When you do try it, I will personally drive out here on every update, film every update because I know the community is so, so interested in this treatment. I mean, I have guys literally telling me, should I cancel my hair transplant appointment to, to see if this works? Hold your horses, guys. I would not cancel anything. Uh, we don't know if it if it really does work. More research is necessary, and that's why we're doing this. But give me your thoughts on that. I mean, I sent you the, the Google document that one of our Hair Restoration Network members created, uh, which I think had all the information that is necessary. Well, I love your support and enthusiasm on this uh, field. And... Uh, like everything else, uh, sometimes science starts from the public demand. And right now, it seems like the public demand is pretty high. So uh, when we did strip procedures back then, uh, if you was not as popular, not among surgeons, not among patients, because we did, couldn't get good results because we didn't have good techniques. Mm -hmm. But then the demand was growing higher and higher to the point that we couldn't resist it. I said, with a good conscience, I cannot ignore the fact that most of the people are asking for FUE. So that's my job to go figure out what's the best way of doing FUE, what's the best device to do FUE, what's the best, imp that's how we invented implanter, that, that's how we came up with the idea of simultaneous extraction and placement. That was a public demand. And this is another one. So it might fail, I'm not promising that our research is going to uh, prove that this is a solid uh, approach, but if it is, at least we've, if, if the, we've done our part. And it's good that you support that, and I'm glad that you kept annoying <laughs> all doctors, including me. <laughs> I mean, I th yeah, I mean, I think a couple of doctors are just like, okay, okay, well, I, I don't see the reason in doing it. But like you said, look, when there's a demand, patients want to see this. And even if it fails, then at least we have concrete right. evidence. At least we say, look, yeah. we tried it. This was the outcome. I'm sorry, guys, but we move on to something else. I think we owe it to our patients and as a patient educator, you owe it to your users to give them the best they can uh, because they rely on us for the best technique and the best information. So if there is anything that could slightly improve the result of hair restoration, why not? I mean, it's, it's worth my time and worth the money and time of my team to at least study it, right? Because all of the new equipments and innovations that we have in the field came about uh, because we were not happy with the status quo. We want to do something a little bit better, a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective. And this could be one of them. It could be like a huge thing. Or you may say, come back and say, you know what? We tried it. It didn't work. You saw the pictures that I sent you with uh, with Dr. Barkuthi, right? You saw the, the test site, which was 0 0.4 and the control site, which was, you know, nothing. 
Right. So, but just from looking at it, what were your thoughts? Well, the pictures show a difference, but it's not statistically significant. We cannot rely on one or two cases to make a conclusion. That's why we're doing this study. We want to have enough number of patients and enough number of procedures so we can, when we compare them, we put them into the statistical analysis and say, okay, this works 100%. So and if we can publish it in peer-reviewed journals, something that hasn't been done before. 